And can you go back to um, the, the PC and how does the role of the OS in a mobile device differ from uh, a personal computer? And I'm specifically thinking about the role that Apple OS has typically played. And perhaps uh, if you wanted to, um, I could talk a little bit about uh, the role of um, Windows and, and the Microsoft world, because uh, that's primarily where I've spent most of my life, even though I've ventured into the Apple world uh, from time to time from the early 80s on. I think you end up with, a, in, a, in the Microsoft world at least, kind of this development of an ecosystem, right? Um, when they go ahead and, and, and design a, uh, a new laptop computer, um, they are going to go ahead and marry it up with, a, with an appropriate operating system. That operating system then allows a certain, of, a certain number of other things to happen, whether it be Apple TV or whatever's linked to it, right? So you end up with this possibility of, uh, of buying from Mac getting their operating system and doing a number of things that which they uh, that we kind of allow to happen right that whole proprietary piece especially of Macintosh is, is been much tighter yeah yeah well even on the Microsoft side I mean if you were going to be an individual corporation that was going to develop a, um, a piece of software that was going to run on Windows whether it was Windows ME um, or XP or 7 or whatever you had to abide by the specifications that Microsoft set out. And Apple does this as well, except that Apple, uh, they don't really allow anybody else to design their software. Um, so they've been a closed shop on both the hardware and the software side, whereas Microsoft only does the software and they allow anybody to license their software to run on hardware that's designed by uh, Lenovo, designed by HP, designed by Compaq. Um, I used to be a, a white box developer, so I would build my own hardware and then just uh, purchase um, an OEM original equipment manufacturer license for Windows and sell it that way. Um, I can't make any money on that anymore, but uh, it, it's kind of interesting. So Microsoft and Apple ba basically said to all manufacturers of software though, it has to conform to these kinds of things. For instance, the first menu item has to be file on the uh, when Microsoft side of things. The next one has to be edit and it has to have these sub menu items on it as well. So it becomes very, very restrictive. On the mobile devices, the OS's don't have that kind of restriction. Um, in fact, every single app has a different way of functioning and it accesses different kinds of functionalities that are built within the actual device itself. Do you want to come up with a rejoinder there? Yeah, I think I agree with that a lot, especially on the idea of the mobile devices, because when you see, um, you pull one up and you open it, um, depending on how that particular um, app designer sees the world, that's how we see and interact with his or, his or her piece of software. So it, it does allow for a lot of wide open things. It becomes an awful lot more, um, I think, open to reflect the need of the software rather than being restricted by those limitations that we spoke of in the software design having to fit whatever, fit, whatever was designed in that operate to sit with that operating system, right? So it leaves for a lot, a lot more open um, access to, to what, um, might be done with that piece of, and it could just run just one thing then. It doesn't have to be a, an all-stop shop. It can do just one item. The more simple and direct it is, probably the more meaningful it's going to be for the use of the people who need it. Yeah, we seem to be segueing quite nicely into the second set of questions. That is, what is the app concept all about? Why is this concept effective when you're working with mobile devices? And how does this differ from software apps and suites that are available for the PCs? So you want to continue on with uh, your discussion as far as you know, defining what that app concept is really about and then talking about its applicability to the mobile devices themselves. And then I'll come back when you seem to run out of steam. Okay. I think um, it's a real reflection to that idea of anytime, anywhere um, kind of uh, use. You need to know or, or want to know something or have to have something happen at a given time. I think an app is really, really re reflective and, and reactive to that. 
so that if an individual um, needs to do a thing, they can get an app or a group of apps that do that, right? So it's specifically directed towards that need. It's, it's very reactive to what's, what's going on in the marketplace at the time. If there's a, a real rise in something like Twitter, well, we can have five or six new Twitter apps come out that do exactly the things that we want. And somebody might see the use of Twitter online and say, oh, jeepers, you know, I really like this, uh, you know, on the desktop, but it's too clunky. And uh, so I'm going to clean it up like this, and I'm going to be able to put it in my pocket and carry on and go out and do the work or, or whatever that I want and still be connected to my network which is really where the, some of the strength of some of these exist. So I think the app is really strong that way. Yeah, if, if I take a look at the example of the Adobe Connect app, for instance, uh, regardless of what platform it's on, um, can you just talk about the applicability of that app with not only the functionality that it's supposed to be carrying out, but also how it specifically works with the mobile device concept as compared to what we're doing right now, because both of us are sitting on big do desktop machines. Uh, I'm sitting up with an iMac here, and you've got some version of a PC or something like that. Um, and, and we're going to get a very different kind of experience if we work on a mobile device in the same software. Right, and, and um, you know, it, it almost fills a different space yet again, right? I mean, if I, I want to have a nice meeting with you where we need to share, you know, well, we can even do that. But uh, if we want to be able to have a full-blown-ish kind of meeting, um, it's almost comes to me like the between full-blown video conferencing and Skype. You know, that they, they end up doing the same overall piece. They allow to communicate. Um, but the functionality with them, which inside of them is larger. So face-to-face, -face, using this piece that we're doing, we have lots of functionality. On the app version, we lose a bit of functionality, but we gain mobility. Um, Colin and I went down uh, to Montreal to do a presentation on video conferencing a couple years ago, and on the way down, our class was taking place. So we hooked into Adobe Connect and had our class with Francois and yourself um, by uh, Adobe Connect in the uh, on the way down the road in in uh, uh, an SUV using um, a cell phone signal, right? You know, uh, so it just enabled us to be in in this case three places at once, um, and uh, which is is pretty hard. Um, but the app made that possible. So and now they've cleaned it up a lot too since then. I so I was on the other night. I'm using it with my students now because um, I, I run an online course uh, for philosophy, and I've uh, set it up so that I actually have a uh, my office hours. Um, and if they want to connect with me from wherever they are, um, they can come in on any mobile device and, and uh, we can make use of it. So it, it allows for an awful lot more functionality and portability, I think. Right. The, the, the one thing that does come out about, though, because you have a restricted uh, desktop space, the amount of real estate that you have available on the screen means essentially that you have to switch from functionality to functionality to functionality. For instance, if you are going to be using the chat room, you will have the chat space available to you and you won't be able to see the video or you won't be able to use the notes, etc. So you're always having to switch from place to place to place to place because of the restrictions in terms of the, the real estate that you have. But that works um, in favor of the actual device that you have not only from the perspective of space, but it also means that you don't have to have the functionality running simultaneously all at the same time, taking up not only uh, bandwidth, but you also have um, the possibility of being able to make use of uh, the processing speed, the amount of RAM that you have available, and all that kind of stuff, and you don't have to duplicate all of those capabilities all at the same time. Do you want to say something about that? Well, yeah, the one thing that comes to my mind is, and I know it maybe sounds a little bit theoretical or whatever, but the idea of democratization is very important here. We end up with uh, kids now being able to, no matter what they've got, because most of them are carrying, whether it be an iPod uh, or, or uh, you know, because iPods now are, are, you know, for you know, in the hundred dollar range, you know, not in the hundreds of dollar range anymore, or cell phone or something, because that's culturally needed. Now they can be involved in, the, in this conversation and maybe don't have to have access to a, you know, a $1,000 uh, laptop or whatever. And it gives, so it gives equity of access, I think, um, in a lot of cases. And I think that's really valuable. Uh, like you say, it doesn't have the functionality. It doesn't allow them to, be, to do the full-blown um, 
Ex yeah, it, we say we're we're down in less than 200 bucks for a, something. They could go now and be involved in any class anywhere, right? Um, and uh, so it, it gives an awful lot more opportunity, I think, from that point of view. And you see, you trade off the beautiful experience we're having right now, where you know I can I can see you know into your space and and see you know kind of we're almost like the technology disappears, right? I, I think this technology disappears better than the than the other right now because the the um, apps are still you know kind of a little bit clunky, like you're saying, because they can't do as many things so easy. Yeah, and uh, it'll be interesting. I, I live in a BlackBerry world, so I'm, I'm going to take an example from that. Uh, the next BB10 uh, that's supposed to be available in January or February of next year is supposed to allow us that seamless transition from one a function to another function on the same uh, mobile device. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and then it'll have uh, ramifications in terms of everybody else's device will have to do the same kinds of things very, very quickly as well. Um, that's in a really, can I just interject for a second? I think that's really important, Roland, is the fact that with this in the, in the right now in the mobile world, it is kind of a one thing at a time place, right? Um, where I can quite often have um, several different uh, kind of associated and, and uh, pieces of software open on my laptop working together, you know, and pulling stuff across. Uh, I think that is a really big adjustment, and if BlackBerry is going to make that move, I think they're really on the right direction. <laughs>